welcome back everyone to a new episode of Mushroom Adventures. Now, I've decided that it's time for me to make an episode on constructing an electric pasteurization barrel, mainly because my barrel is starting to get old and the metal tabs that go to the heating element are kind of worn thin because I've been using a wire brush to get the old rust off or corrosion because you know that it sits down there and the air is humid and there's I get water on it sometimes and so uh, it tends to get the tabs too hot where it connects to my uh, extension cord and it's kind of just been wearing the cord out I keep having to cut uh, the ends off where it heat stresses and melts the, the plastic casing around the wire which is not good um, so I said well you know I could redesign a better idea than what I have because if you remember the barrel in my basement is on a, a dolly with a, uh, a cargo strap going around the center of it and it's a, uh, a vertical design where I've actually capped off for the, both the ends the heating element goes well the heating element goes in one end the other end's capped off and then I drill uh, bolts into it you'll see what I'm talking about and then I cut the uh, this side off of it which is actually bottom and I put holes your drainage holes and then this would be the uh, the opening up here for the uh, to get the fork in and get everything out but I realized that this design this kind of gross stuff coming out of that one the, uh, the vertical design is, uh, well, one, it's not too good for people that are, you know, small in stature that can't handle the weight of a, a full batch of it, you know, because you got to teeter it back, get around the side of it, then lay it to the ground slowly and get the uh, hot water out. And, you know, if you don't have enough strength to do it right, you can get scalded by the hot water, which isn't good. So I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try to make a horizontal design where I'm still going to have the heating element in one of the holes, but the barrel is going to be sideways like this on a frame with casters so we can roll it across the floor. And uh, I'm thinking probably cut out a window here to get in the fork to remove everything and probably a section of the window too will have the drainage holes drilled and the frame will also have caster wheels on the top side of it that the burr will sit on only these caster wheels will be the style where they're fixed and won't rotate and that way the, the heavy bar will sit on the wheels I'll have something that uh, we can turn the barrel and it'll pr pretty much just roll on the wheels easily until the the area where we have the drainage holes comes to the bottom and it drains out the water that way. Now I've seen designs like this before that were horizontal but they just employed like a uh, like a drain plug on the side of it and they let it drain slowly like that for like an hour but you know, we can't wait an hour, gosh. We're going to obviously drain it out quick, and then we are going to, you know, do the same, take the hulls or whatever, and put them in our press and press out the excess water. But I think this design will be better because you don't have to be a large person to deal with the weight because it'll be on the wheels that allows it to move easily, even if the barrel is completely full and heavy. Um, also, too, probably shouldn't have as many problems with the uh, heating element getting uh, corrosion on it since it's not going to be a, towards the floor although the uh, the one I have down there the uh, the pasteurization barrel I'm using I do have a, a thick wood plank on the bottom of it to space it so it doesn't so the heating element never actually touches the wet floor but still the moisture gets up in there but this way it'll probably be uh, kinder on the heating element make it last longer and, uh, you know, I just like doing something new and trying something new on this. And uh, I think it'll be neat. 
So uh, let's get to maybe uh, drawing out a design on the barrel and building the, uh, the frame for which the barrel will sit on. Okay, I've got the frame put together. You can see that I have the straight non-turning caster wheels so the barrel can roll this way. Now it measures 37 inches long by 17 and a half inches wide and the space in between these boards is six and a half inches and these are one by eight pressure treated boards. You can find them in your deck section. It's the same board I was using to repair the uh, the press because it's much tougher than just using two by fours. But you could use two by fours if you had to because we're not going to put a whole lot of stress on these. And so Here's my barrel. I'm gonna put it on. Now you can see I lined it up so the one wheel is at the rim of the barrel so that it kind of catches it and keeps the barrel from going uh, forwards or backwards. Then the back ones are probably about four inches from the very end and they're all touching well. And you can see when I spin it, it spins nicely. So what I'll do next is put some caster wheels on the bottom of this so we can roll it around. And then I'll get to working on the barrel. I have the window cut out of the barrel, you see. And the section I'm going to drill holes in a staggered fashion. You can see I marked it once. The reason I did it again is because I wanted the, uh, the heating element to go in the hole right there. I wanted it to be positioned towards the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of the barrel, because as you know, heat rises, and so you don't want to, you don't want the element towards the top. And you can see inside this barrel, it still has some leftover junk. This barrel was used, I believe, for pear juice. And it's like a sticky sweet, it's probably like, probably turned into pear wine by now. But uh, I'm not quite sure, maybe some of you can tell me, that the, uh, the color of the barrels will determine its category, like for instance these were blue ones, so they're food grade. I have some white ones too. I'm not sure if I have any back here. No. But I know, I know those are solvent grade. And then the one you see that I currently use is actually uh, had weed killer in it. And I wouldn't recommend getting a barrel with that, of course. I had to scrub it and wash it with a pressure washer um, and soap probably about four or five times over and then run about three batches of hot water through it just to... Uh, get the smell of the uh, weed killer out and to, you know, to what I would think would be levels that were safe, but of course I've used that barrel hundreds of times and uh, never had a problem with it, but obviously, you know, you want to avoid that. Try to go for a, uh, a food grade barrel like these. Uh, I actually bought these on Craigslist marketed for um, rainwater barrels, and it was only I think thirty dollars, maybe less. It'll depend on where, you know what part of the country you're in, but it's not a bad price. And I use them too for uh, actual rain barrels for the garden. So I'm going to drill these holes out right here and uh, clean the inside out. Actually, I have to clean it out first before I do anything else to it. I'm going to again use a hose, scrub it out with some nice soap and water until there's no more odor of anything that was in it because it smells pretty foul right now. And I will get it cleaned up, then eventually bleach sanitized, just like the mixer, so we don't have any worry, worries about contamination. Okay, I got this barrel all cleaned out. Took a good bit of scrubbing. I used a lot of uh, just dish soap and a good uh, stiff grout brush to really get into all the nooks and crannies. 
but I rinsed it out really well. You can see there's really no more residue. Now, one thing I realized is the barrel I have in my basement at the moment, the way I have the heating element mounted, I can just put it over one of these holes and then run the bolts around the, uh, the opening here. Trouble is, the heating element I have at the moment doesn't have as large of a, uh, I guess a face plate you'd say, it's a mounting plate. But this is a, a compact 1500 watt, 120 volt water heating element. It's a Camco Universal water heater element. But you see it has four areas where you mount bolts through it and two uh, wire hookups. So what I'm going to do is just mount this on the side like probably right about here. Since I'm most likely going to unload this barrel facing it from this direction over to my left, I'm going to put the, the element right here basically so it's out of the way of my fork. So make unloading a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole there. You see it already has kind of a, uh, a giant rubber washer. But like my other one, I got some interior, interior exterior, weather type siliconized acrylic caulk. I'm going to caulk the hell out of it and bolt it down well make sure no water can get out because you know the hot water is going to expand the barrel a little bit expand the seals so it better be tight um, you're going to also want to caulk the, the bolt holes and where the bolts clamp down too make sure no water gets in between the the holes you've drilled for that so I'm going to drill the, the holes for the element and get her mounted in Here you can see I have the heating element bolted in. I used the holes on the uh, plate as a template. You get the one in there then put a bolt in and space it around so we get the spacing of the other ones appropriate. Now I got two inch long stainless steel bolts. They are three eighths wide. Now of course you have to see the size of the holes on the uh, element you get, but that's how big it was for mine. You see on the inside, I have it so the heads of the bolts are on the inside of the barrel, so I ha don't have a whole lot I'm hitting with the fork when I take stuff out. And this element only sticks out that far, which is pretty good. It's a bit more compact than the other one I have. Now, you see here is a bit of a a space on the inside here that um, I may fill up with caulk but probably not because I think the heat will be a problem so I'll just make sure to blast it out real good with the uh, water hose on jet mode every time I use it to make sure there's not a bunch of cotton seed hulls or whatever getting stuck up in there and going bad so I don't have any of this tightened down I'm going to take it all back apart, coat everything, uh, the holes, um, the gap around this gasket on the inside, coat it all with a silicone caulk, put it back together, tighten it down, and give it, I'm guessing, at least 12 hours a set, but I'm not going to do anything with the barrel until tomorrow. So I'll have it all together and ready to go, and we could try our very first batch with this new barrel design.